What's up everyone, Criddle here, and I want to go over how to create a dedicated server for VRising now that 1.0 is out. This game is absolutely amazing, playing it solo, but with, when you play it with others, it is so much better. So, we're going to go through uh, how to set up a dedicated server. I'm going to go through it fairly quickly, but hopefully very thoroughly. Uh, and it's actually really easy to set up, but a few people get mixed up with some of the different settings. So we're going to go through it step by step. First thing you're going to want to have is two separate computers. You can do this on one computer if you choose to. However, I would recommend having a second computer. Um, so if you do have that, then I would recommend doing that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to switch over to the second computer, which is right over here. And we're going to open up our Steam client. You want to come right here uh, on the drop down menu. Make sure you have tools selected. Most likely you have games selected. Um, but make sure you, you do want to have the tools selected here so that you can find it. And then type in V Rising. Uh, you can see here that I've got the V Rising game, the V Rising soundtrack, and then the dedicated server. This is what we want to install. So we're going to click on that. And then you want to make sure that it's going to this computer and not one of your other, you know, streaming from your other computers. If you have multiple computers with Steam on there, make sure it does say this computer. Click install. We're going to go ahead and install that to our C drive. It will take a second to, uh, to install depending on your internet speed. And once it's installed, we are going to right click on it. Boom, that is done, easy peasy. We're gonna right click on it, go to properties. We're going to click install files right here. And then we're gonna go over here to browse. This will open up our Windows folder showing the vRising folder that it just installed to. And this is everything that you're going to need to get started. The first thing you wanna do is go here to the server, um, sorry, the start server.bat, start server example.bat, if I could actually read properly. Uh, you want to copy that and make a, uh, and then paste another, make a copy of that. So then you can name this whatever you want. I'm gonna name it Criddle Server. Uh, you can leave it as the start server example copy dot bad if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and name it Criddle Server so I know which one is this server because if you have multiple servers, you want to know which ones are which. So when you start them up, you're going to then right click on this and you're going to say edit. This will open it up into Notepad or whatever editing software you have. I recommend Notepad. Here where it says server name, inside the quotations, you wanna change this server name to whatever you want. This is the server name that they will be able to find in the game on the server list. We're gonna call it vcriddle. Uh, come over here to where it says save name. You can name this whatever you want. If you wanna leave it at world one, you can. But again, if you have multiple saves, um, I would recommend just changing this to whatever save you want. We're gonna call it criddle save. Uh, you could also call it vcriddle if you want to name it the same thing as your server name, whatever you want to do. And then you're going to hit file and go to save. At this point, you are completely done with this. You do not have to look at it again. So you can close that down. Uh, and then you're going to want to run this bat file. You do not want to run vrisingserver.exe. That's not the file you need to do. You're just going to double click here on this vcriddle or sorry, criddle server.bat. And you can see that it's going to add in some extra folders here. So we're gonna run that. Everything should be fine. And you see these extra folders that are being created right over here inside that previous folder. Once that is run, you can go ahead and close this. To close it, you want to click over here, hit Control C. You may have to do it a couple times. It's kind of finicky sometimes with the way it works. But if it doesn't pop up uh, the terminate batch job, you can also close it just using the X right here. Uh, but I do try to close it using the terminate batch. Hit Y for yes, and then you're done with that. Um, next thing you want to do is go here to the vRising server data. Double click on that. Go to streaming assets. Double click on that. And then go to settings and double click on that. From here, you want to grab both of these files. Uh, the server game settings.json file and server host settings.json file. You're going to copy those. And then you're going to back up to the original folder that you went into where you had your criddle server.bat or whatever you named it. And now the new folder that was created for the save data, you're going to double click on that and you're going to go to saves and then V3. It might say V1, V2 if you played this in early access. V3 is from 1.0 forward. So you're going to double click on V3 and then go into whatever server that you want to set up. So if you have multiple set up, uh, then you would go into that one. But since we only have the one, this is the save file that we called it. So Criddle save, double click on that. And you're going to paste your two .json files right in there. 
Um, you're going to go to the one that says server host settings dot JSON, and you're going to edit that. At this point, there's a few things that you need to change, a few things that you don't have to change, and a few things you might want to change. So first and foremost, you don't need to change the server name. We already changed that in the previous settings. Uh, if you want to put in a description, you can type that in here if you want to, and I'll show you where that uh, appears. Right here, uh, the port, you can leave it at the default ports, and I'm going to show you how to set that up here in just a minute, or you can change the ports if you want to. I'm going to show you that you can change them, so we're going to put in 12,000 here, and then we're going to put in 12,001 for the uh, second port. You do need to have two separate ports here, so just make one and then put another one right below it with one higher. Um, you can change your users if you want to. You can change their admin if you want to, how many users can connect it and admins connected. Uh, I wouldn't mess with the server frames. And then the save name here, is, you see it's world one. You don't need to mess with this. We already changed that in the .bat file. If you want to have a password, you do need to add that here. We're going to go ahead and put in password as our password. Um, if you want this to appear so they do not have to do a direct connect through your IP, if you don't know what your IP is, you can go to Google, type in what's my IP, and it'll pop up and give you your IP. And then you just need to take that IP and add in your port number, which is in this case 12,000 to the end of it. And that's going to be your direct connect uh, if you want to direct connect that way. But if you go here and you change this to true, and then the one right underneath it to true, that will allow it to appear in the game on the server list when uh, you start it up. It will not appear until you start up the server and then launch the game. If you already have the game open and then you start the server, you need to close out of the game and then relaunch the game. Uh, at this point, you can just say save. The rest of these you can change if you want to. Um, the, the save count, this is the save interval in seconds, so you can make that as short or long as you want, but just know that it's going to continue to make more saves uh, up to this maximum number here. You don't really need to mess with any of this, uh, so if you don't know what those do, I wouldn't recommend dealing with it. At that point, you are done with the server host uh, settings, so you can go ahead and close that down. You're then gonna want to go into your uh, router settings. If you don't know how to do this, I'm going to show you how to do it using my personal router. However, it may be a little bit different for you depending on what router you're using. Uh, so you might need to look up port forwarding for your router to do this. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go in here to port forwarding. Usually you go to advanced and that's where you're going to find the port forwarding. This is what my port forwarding page looks like. And you can see here that I have my vRising set up to the uh, external ports here. This is the default ports. And then I also have these two Steam uh, ports forwarding as well. These are not necessarily required. However, I have uh, run into some issues before where people weren't able to find games or it wasn't showing up in the Steam list um, because these ports were not forwarded. So you can either add these in the beginning or you can just wait to see if it shows up. If it does show up, then you don't need to worry about it but you're gonna forward these the same way that you do this. You do have to forward the settings or the, the V rising ports that you just entered though. So what we're gonna do is come down here to add custom service. And we're gonna click on add custom service. This is where you're gonna add in your ports. You can name it whatever you want. We're gonna call this V testing uh, just for testing purposes. Right here, we're gonna put in our port range that we just created. So 12,000 to 12,001. You do not have to do this twice. You can do it once for 12,000, 12,001. Uh, so you can put in a range. Make sure that your external port, internal port, it'll just copy that over, uh, depending on, again, your settings. And you're gonna come down here, and this is where you're gonna enter the PC that you are setting this up on. So usually it's gonna be 192.168.1. something usually. However, that's not always the case. If you don't know what your address is, you can go to the command prompt, type in CMD down here, go to command prompt, hit enter, and then type in IP config. And you can see right here, it's the IPv4 address. So 192.168.1.15 is this, per, this computer's IP address within the network. Um, sometimes you can scroll down and see different devices that are connected. And if you see right here, my Criddle stream PC, that's, this is my streaming PC that we're setting this up on. Uh, it's 15 right there, so we can easily set that up. I can either click this little button or we can just type it in right here manually. Either one will work. You're going to then hit apply. And that might take it a minute depending on your, your router. 
uh, and then that should apply and it'll appear right down here in the list. We have V testing 12,000 to 12,001 being forwarded to this PC. Cool. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and close that down. Um, and then you can go back to the original files and back up a little bit and go to the original location where we created our crittle server bat. And at this point we are good to go. We have a server that is now set up, ready to play with the default settings. We'll go over how to change those settings and what you can change them to here in just a minute, but we can go ahead and run it and this game will pop up. So you can see that there's no errors again. So let's now switch back over to the game PC. We'll open that here. We're gonna hit play. Let that load in. Once the game has loaded up, you're going to go over here, hit the play button, and then play online. You can choose one of these if you want to, but it's not necessary. I would just go down here and say show all servers. Click on that. Twistedvania is the server, the dedicated server that I have set up with um, another, a group that I've adminning the server for. Uh, if you want to join us, you are welcome to do that. Ask me how. Um, but you can go over here to enter server name and type in v crittle, which is what we named it. So boom, v crittle. It does have a password protected. It has clan size of four, 40 players. Go ahead and click on that. If you put in a description that would show up over here, you're going to hit join game. And this is where you enter the password if you had one. If you did not put in a password, it would not ask you for that. So we're going to type in password and click connect and there we go it is now loading into that server we'll let that go for just a second go ahead and skip that and here we go we are at character creation we can create our character however we want name him crittle and hit complete and we are now in the game easy peasy that is literally how easy it is to set this up so hopefully that gets you going. Now that we know how to do that, let's go back over and I'll show you how to change some of the settings for your server if you wanted to have it PVP, PVE, uh, and those kind of things. So going back over to your uh, server PC, uh, you can go ahead and close this down. We're gonna, we're gonna close it using the X this time, showing that you can do that if you want to. Um, and we are going to go into the V Rising server data and then go into streaming assets. And then here you can see the game settings presets, double click on that. And this is gonna give you a lot of different options. So you can open these up and look through them on how to change some things. And you can see here, this is a PVP server. It's got time restricted on it uh, for the PVP mode, for the castle damage, for the claiming mode, uh, those kind of things. These are all the different settings that you can change. Um, but it's not every setting. So this is only gonna show you for that particular hardcore trio PVP. Uh, you can come down here to a level 90 PVE server and this is what they do for that. So this is, you know, this will allow you to jump directly into that and this is the uh, like equipment ID. So where do you change these at though? Um, so if you go back to your save data, your saves here, V3, and then your save name, and then you're gonna go here to critical or sorry, server game settings.json. You're gonna double click on that or edit, and it should open up in your um, notepad. This is where you actually are changing your settings. So what I showed you previously are the some of the settings you can change it to. And we're gonna go over this very quickly, but just know that these may um, not work the way that you want them to. Just look up how to change the different settings. For example, I'm gonna use this first one here. Game difficulty, as you see here is in quotations, it says normal. If you actually wanna change this to the new difficulty setting, which is brutal, you do not go over here and type in brutal like this. That will not change it to brutal. You actually have to delete the whole thing, including the quotations, and put a number two here. That'll make it uh, brutal difficulty. If you wanna make it normal difficulty, you put in a one. And I believe if you wanna make it an easier difficulty, you put in a zero. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I do know for a fact, um, game difficulty with a two here makes it the brutal difficulty. So we're gonna put that. Uh, PVP type is if you want this to be PVP or PVE, you can change that right here. Uh, if you want any sort of PVE, whether it's time restricted, always on or whatever, 
you do have to make it a PVP server. Um, if you don't ever want to do any type of PVP, then just turn that off and make it PVE, and then you can skip a lot of the next few things. Um, here you can change the castle damage mode to always, never, or time restricted, as I showed you in that previous. Again, go look through some of those other settings and see what you can change some of these to. Um, the siege weapon health, this is going to be how tough the siege weapon is. Uh, I believe it goes like low or very low, low, normal, high, and then very high or something along those lines. Again, go back and check those settings. Uh, player damage mode, always, never, time restricted, all that kind of stuff. So you can go kind of scroll through these and change these as you need to. Uh, if, they, if you're not sure exactly what you can do with them, you can Google that or, or you can look through that list that I showed you. Um, if you do change it to time restricted, you're going to want to come all the way down here to the bottom. And this is where you're going to change your times at. Uh, so this is player interactions. And then the local time, you can change this to whatever local time you want. I leave it at default local, uh, but you can change this to EST, CST. You can change it to several different things. Again, Google that if you want to try to change those. Uh, and there's places out there that'll tell you all the different options that you can change here. And then the verse player weekday time and the verse player weekend time. And then you have your castle damage. So if you do time restricted, this will be the time that you actually can do those things. So let's say that up here in the very beginning, we'll scroll all the way up and we said castle damage mode is going to be time restricted. We just changed that like so. Whoops, time restricted. And then we also want to do player damage mode is going to be time restricted. Okay. Time restricted. We then come all the way back down here to these times. And you can see that the player weekday mode and then the player weekend mode are both set to the same time right now. So this would be at 20 hundred hours, 8 p.m. until 22, which is 10 p.m local time which is whatever the server local time is so it'll be your local time but for your friends it'll be your local time not their local time if that makes sense um, so if they are living a different time zone or whatever just make sure you understand how that works so this will be based on the local time you can change this to whatever you want let's say we want uh, the pvp to be you know 10 a.m until 10 p.m. That's what it would look like. So this goes anywhere from a zero, or I would say from a one, uh, all the way to a 24, or a zero all the way to a 24 will also work. So that'll start directly at that 24 hour mark uh, and go all the way through. You can also um, set the minutes here if you want to. So then maybe on the weekends, during the weekday, let's say maybe you want to just do the 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. you could do that and then you can come down here for the weekends we want to do all day on the weekends so we just change that to that right so zero all the way to 24 it goes 24 hours a day it will then allow you to pvp all day saturday all day sunday but then monday through friday it will only be from 8 p.m until 10 p.m you could do the same thing down here for the castle start times or for the castle times to damage castles and raid castles and that kind of thing. Uh, everything else you can kind of fiddle with however you want to. Just note that if you make some of these changes, I would save this file uh, just in case you make some changes and break something. Uh, you can always go back and use the default settings. Um, but yeah, go through and look at these and reference those other files that I showed you. Hopefully that helps you out in setting up your server. Once you're done with this, you hit file, save, close this down, and then obviously go back to your .bat file and run that, and it will set up all of your different settings that you have, uh, have changed. Hopefully it helps you out. If it does, please like, subscribe, follow. Come on over to my Twitch stream. Uh, I do stream daily. Ask me any questions that you may have. Uh, jump into my Discord if you want to. Ask questions there, and hopefully I can help you out. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye!